Howdy there, partner. Who am I? I used to be Javier Vidania, the one helping you accomplish your home goals with home buying tips and house market tips and all kinds of stuff. But now, from now on, you guys should call me Don Javier because I am an investor. That's right. And for today only, you can get 20% off my investment course. Just go to Javier Vidania Investor, 100% uh, best investor in the world.com. Use code Kyle Seagraves is my puppy. Now that I'm Don Javier, the investor, I'm going to take the time to share with you in this video why I decided to buy an investment home in the worst housing market ever. Now, that's probably just my YouTuber me trying to make a very spicy title, but it's not a great market for investors. So, I mean, it really is the worst market to buy. A lot of people are just like, I'm scared to buy, Javier. Is this the right time to buy? I don't know if it's the right time, Javier. What do I do? Hopefully, this example will show you that it's not as black or white as if it's the right time to buy or not. It's a situational thing dependent on how prepared you are and if the right opportunity comes, hey, why not? So, I've never invested in a home ever. I don't have investments and I mean, I bought my own houses and sold them and I've gotten to the point where I am now helping a lot of home buyers and sellers, but people always go, Javier, you know, you should make investment videos. And I've always been like, dude, that's not my thing, right? And honestly, I never thought I was going to invest in a home anytime soon, especially in this market. I found myself in the end of December, um, my mother-in-law's brother, essentially my, un my, what is it, my, my, my uncle-in-law, my wife's, my wife's uncle, who took care of his mom the most, a uh, youngest one of everybody, the healthiest one of all of them, passed away of COVID. And it was a real shock to everybody. Uh, my wife and I uh, got out of our quarantine and we went to the funeral. Uh, it was uh, late December. And now, and more importantly, my own mother-in-law, who has to now step up and take care of her mom even more than she can, even though she lives in a different city, it was really, it was, it was really something to see. And um, while we were up there, um, my mother-in-law talked to me about, hey, you know, can we buy, I know I want to buy a house for my mom and this, that, or the other. And she wanted some advice, not to approach me to buy, but, you know, she just wanted to kind of to see if she could be able to buy. Unfortunately, they were not in a position to buy. But um, as I started investigating the area, um, it's it's not even like a main city. It's like a city away from Phoenix. It's like two or three hours away. It's a smaller town. You know, the house prices weren't so expensive. You know, thank thankfully the YouTube thing's going okay. The real estate thing's going okay. And for some reason, I just felt compelled to be like, you know what, let me let me take care of it. I hadn't talked to my lender. I hadn't done anything. I was just like, yeah, let me let me let me see if I can handle this, right? I said that, and seeing my wife's grandma just just completely light up, right, for a first time smile, and and, and who knows how long, right, after losing her son, um, man, I, I just felt compelled to do it. A few days passed. We got home. Uh, my wife says, hey, uh, they're asking about the house. Are you, are you looking into qualifying yet called my lender uh my lender advised against it she's like no i don't recommend you do this and because you know it's it, family things go wrong but hey i got qualified and we start looking for houses and lo and behold this cute little house comes up a week ago i think um perfect area for her uh right size right bedrooms well maintained <laughs> i made an offer it got accepted and your boy is now an investor. Let's talk about this, right? You guys know the story now. Let's talk about the financial part of this, okay? Um, I'm not gonna charge this lady rent. She she used to pay $300 to her wherever she was living before, and she says, I'm gonna pay $300 like it or not. So I'm essentially covering everything else. So why am I doing this? You know, supposedly for all the, the real estate editors out there, there's a, there's a market crash coming, and it seems like the stupidest thing to do, but what's the one thing I've been telling you guys for the past few months? If you're going to buy a house, buy long term. Now let's evaluate what I'm buying here. I'm buying a, a small house for I think it's like 150, 160,000, right? Doesn't seem like a solid investment, especially if it's a small town that's very far away. But I asked a lot of locals, hey, what's going on with this town? It's starting to grow a lot. It's, it's expanded a lot in the last year or two. Before COVID hit, they were starting to do all kinds of festivals there and it's slowly growing, 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 right? So it's not going to happen overnight, but there's a potential to continue to grow. The taxes are dirt cheap. Like it's insane. I know some people out there are paying like thousands, 5,000, 10,000 a year in taxes. It's like hundreds of dollars, right? So uh, with that and the low interest rate, I mean, my monthly payment maybe is 600 to 800 bucks. So with, with the $300 I'm receiving from her, 
um, it's only really a four to $500 investment every month. And quite frankly, I can float that for the next 10 years if I have to. Any repairs that might pop up, of course, we'll take care of. I can float that. And at the end of the day, is it the smartest investment? I don't know. But I would rather have this woman live in a home, have my mother-in-law have the security of knowing she's in a in decent home, than have another 500 bucks in my pocket every month. So what I did is um, I talked to my father-in-law. And uh, he has, uh, I have three sisters-in-law who just started working recently and, you know, they're learning about the, you know, the world and said, hey, I'm buying this home. Do you guys want to come in half with me? Now, I'm buying it. It's still in my name. It's for my mother-in-law and my grandmother to live in, to you know, up there. But, you know, once it's closed, I can say, hey, you know, we can pay me back half of what I spent. And anytime there's an expense, we cover half. So now instead of a $500 investment, I only have to come up with 250 bucks. Truthfully, it's not a wise investment. It's I shouldn't have gone 50-50 because I'm taking all the risk still, right? Something happens, I'm the one on the title, on the loan, so I'm screwed, right? But I just like, you know what? These people you can give them an investment opportunity for them to start investing. And I don't know if this ends up paying off to something like huge where the, the market continue to goes up in this little area and, and, and prices go up or maybe there's an adjustment and, and prices go down. But long term, if there is an adjustment, we have confidence that within five to six years, it's going to bounce back up. And of course, we also travel down that way a lot. So in having a house to stay in, it's not a bad thing to have about. So ultimately, what I want you to take from this is once you buy your investment house, you can get a cool cowboy hat like me. So don't get a cowboy hat unless you're an investor. If you're thinking about buying a home or you're thinking about investing some money you have in a house and you're concerned about the market, yeah, the market's very terrifying. And the last experience we have with the crazy market was 10, 15 years ago when the prices tanked, right? But you know how I talked to you about worst case scenario for me, $250 is my every month what I have to pay, right? That 250 is gonna stay consistent for the next five or 10 years. It's a fixed interest rate. I'm comfortable with the monthly payment. And even if it loses half of its value overnight, I would be okay making that payment for another five or 10 years. What we can't control, it makes us nervous. We can't control what's gonna happen with the housing market, right? We can't control what's gonna happen to our jobs. We can't control what's gonna happen to our health. Ultimately, I believe everything in life is a risk. No matter how safe you wanna play it, everything has a little risk associated with it. At the end of the day, if you're comfortable with your monthly payment, and even though worst case scenario, you will lose value on this investment if the market adjusts or tanks or whatever you wanna call it, can you float that monthly payment? What killed a lot of people 10 to 15 years ago is that it was an adjustable rate mortgage and their, their freaking payments ballooned like literally a year after buying and double, tripled, quadrupled, and people lost their house. It's terrible, I know. As long as you buy within your budget, you're comfortable with the payment you have, you have savings in the bank to cover maybe a few months in case something happens to you while you find another job, it will be okay. Or maybe I'm just telling all this to make myself feel better. So um, yeah, it's not closed yet. We're still dealing through the escrow process. So once it's closed, maybe I'll give you guys a little tour. Who knows? Um, I don't even know if this video will do well. So uh, you know, I usually don't make investment content. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, appreciate your guys' time. Don Javier out.